cannabis. Sativa. Dope. Indica. Weed. Leaf. Leaf. This is Leaf Life. All things cannabis for all people. Now, here are your hosts, Ricker and the Bearded Lorax. We publish a free magazine called The Leaf that is available in print in 13 states at your local cannabis retailer and also available online at leafmagazines.com. My name is Mike Ricker and I'm your host of Leaf Life with my co-host, Wes Abney, also known as... The Bearded Lorax. I speak for the trees. And there's Stashley. The token female. And Mary J. White. The smoking female. Welcome to the second half of this Leaf Life show called The Art of Trimming. In just a moment, we'll talk about the history of this craft, beginning with the trimigrants who dropped everything to follow their passion of making a living in the cannabis industry. And we'll spin Stash's wheel to see what products Zebediah Saint, star trimmer for the legendary House of Cultivar Cannabis Company, this show's Greg the Guinea Pig, is going to be trying next. But first, it's time for Not For Nothing. Not for nothing. No, not for nothing. I couldn't help but think it. Not for nothing. I love these. Okay, Mary J. White has nothing to do with cannabis. Ooh, she nothing. looks very eager, Wes. Nothing. Like she hand picked, like she hand trimmed this story. Well, this story is about babies, and Bet I is. love babies. <laughs> I, okay, I don't love that part. Okay, but I love babies, and you know the cool thing about when you're gonna <laughs> have a baby. Well. You know, Wes, is that, um, you yeah, know. It's having been a birthing male. And, well, listen, I've been a baby, okay? And okay, I just okay. want to say. I know a lot about being a baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, okay, the name is a big damn deal, right? Yeah. And you don't know if it should be like your first name and then grandma's last name. and You know what I mean? It's a big thing. Yeah. So, there, the, 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 the story is this. If you're not 100% sure of the name, mm. Give yourselves a little bit of time. Mm. There's a family in, well, England. Oh. And they had the baby a couple weeks ago. Bloody right? hell. Yes. And Oi. the grandma, the mom, was so excited yeah. that she went and got little, what's his name, tattooed on herself. Bernard. Yes, Bernard. So she got Bernard, uh, you know, tattooed. Tattooed on her body? Yes. I mean, we're not quite That's sure good grandmother. Where. Have yeah. you done that yet? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Little monsters. <laughs> God, I mean, names all over me. Right. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so grandma gets a tattoo, right? Yay, how cute. cute. Well, turns out the mom and dad are not happy with his name oh. and they're going to change it. Oops. But they uh, haven't been able to tell her yet. And well, they don't if it's know. Uh, if its name is Winona, you can make it Wino forever, like Wh- Johnny Depp. Like did. Johnny Depp. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, oh, so they don't know how to do it. They're not thrilled. Uh, they're in a huge quandary. Meanwhile, grandma's walking around with Bernard on her ass. Or wait, what's the name? They, <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't say to protect the guilty. Ah. Uh, they don't give wow. you the names. Because, I know its name. Yeah. Bernard. Bernard. Oh, what is that even? Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. So don't get a tattoo of the baby for a couple of months. That's what I'm saying. Not for nothing. Thank oh. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Not yeah. for nothing. Zabby, ready to get high again? Well, let's spin <laughs> Stash's wheel and Always. see what's in Stash's stash. Let's go. Zippity zoom. Ah. Yeah. I have another nug jug. This one is. Gorilla Glue number four. Oh, my favorite. Classic. From oh, Legacy. Oh, that's mm. such a nice string. Wow, is that your, your stuff? I, yeah, I am ready to go. Don't Let's you try this is one. Is that your um, stoked. stoked. Oh. My t-shirt says stoked. See? Stoked it's slash stoked. matches my grassroots hat. I love you in purple. Thank you. Really? Go to grassrootscalifornia.com and buy all their shit. Yeah. It's great stuff. Uh, it's Wes and I wear a new lid every show. Yeah, you do. Yeah, man. We love grassroots, man. We're addicted. Yes, yes we do. And yeah. we like to watch it when you change your shirts. Big facts, Mary it's J. White. It's fun. And Mary J. White changes her shirt in front of us, too. We're like a band on a tour oh, bus. Oh, we are. We don't care. We're like yeah. ABBA. Yeah, okay. We are like ABBA. You know what I mean? Aren't they getting together again or some shit? I think they keep they keep doing things, more things. <laughs> Dancing <laughs> queen. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You are? That's, that's the only that's one you. I could yeah. name. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, Mama mia, mama or whatever. Give me, give me more. That's the queen. Oh, you're yeah. right. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah. I'm oh, with yeah. you. Waterloo. Fire. <sighs> Fuck it. <laughs> I think Fire there's... approved on the Legacy oh, Organics. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm. I like them. I've never had Legacy before, but I like them. Yeah, they're big time yeah. now, bro. FYI, 
Kind of like you, brother. When, uh, well, if yeah. we were in the future oh. about three years and we're talking about professional wrestling, yes. but oh, we're yeah. not there yet. We're talking I give it about Trimigrants. So, yeah. what did you do before you got into Tring? Um, I was a house painter for a while. I was a bouncer at different bars. Um, was that before you were bouncing in the wrestling ring, bro? Uh, after. Okay. I think I, uh, that kind of helped me get the jobs. Yeah, <laughs> As cool. I'd go and they're like, oh, I, I do this, guys. Hey, look. Um, yeah, so I worked at the Crocodile before they moved locations. Uh, that's a great venue oh, here. That yeah. was amazing. A lot yeah. of bands have played the Croc. Mm -hmm. Now, you gave up your previous jobs to yes, be yes, in the yes. weed business, and you're an expert trimmer. And for years, people would make the pilgrimage to from wherever they were in the United States or overseas to come to Humboldt County or, or mm -hmm. the, the Emerald Triangle to trim. And it was almost like the fishing industry in Alaska where you pop in, you make a bunch of money in three months, and then you go back home with uh, a bank account. Yep. Ah. So trimigration has been a real thing for years. And trimming has become an art form mm -hmm. uh, that goes way back past legal recreational cannabis. Yes, yes, yes. Um, see, I am not the most versed on the old in medical days and the the uh, That's traveling okay, for it and all that. Is. I would love to hear. I would love to hear all about it. Well, there's a great, I think it was on Netflix, Murder Mountain, mm -hmm. right? Yep, that was a good one. Oh, so, yeah. 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 I mean, for years, people in Southern Oregon and Northern California have been growing weed and sending it all over the U.S. And the Illegally. difference between that and, yeah. like, the Mexico, like, brickweed situation is they call that brickweed for a reason. Because mm -hmm. they stuffed it all together, you know, super dense, you Compressed know, just it. into a brick, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah, and then it kind of dries and yeah. cures in the kilo form, Oof. you know, wrapped in plastic or whatever. Yeah. Uh, full of seeds. You got to chop it up with seed. scissors. Yep. Yeah. You got to break it apart. Scissors. Break it yeah. off in chunks. Yeah. Yeah. You had to be a trimmer back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Like if you got that weed, you had to, you know, separate, <laughs> right? But then California buds started coming out, and that was, you know, grown in the hills where there's no electricity for the most part. Water is pirated. Yeah. And, yep. you know, for the growing cycle, the growers wouldn't want very many people there because you're trying to keep your crop a secret. Yeah. But then right about October, all of a sudden vans of hippies start coming into town and they're showing up to trim and to process all the weed, much like if you're, you know, someone who harvests uh, crops for a living, mm -hmm. you go and you follow different crop cycles mm -hmm. around the country and you work somewhere yeah. in the spring, you work somewhere in the winter. So these vans of hippies would show up from all over the world yeah. to trim. And it, it created its own economy and, you know, legends. And, yeah. you know, there was also bad things as in the Murder Mountain where, you know, oh. murder, mm -hmm. rape. Right. Right. Babies being had out in the woods, you know, wow. commune mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, All the crazy things that come with making weed illegal. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And reclusive. Mm hmm Yeah. And so that's where that term comes from. Um, and and it's, it's, you know, even today it happens. Uh, we went rented a house in Southern Oregon a couple years ago for our harvest tour mm -hmm. where we tour to different farms and we take photos. Okay. Um, but we rented this house in Medford, uh, which is like the whole town come October smells literally like yeah. weed. It's incredible. <laughs> nice. Like Zabbit Subway for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just cop. reeks yeah. the whole Terrible. town because there's farms everywhere. And so we rented this house. We have a group of us. We had a bus and a, and a SUV. Oh, dear. And, uh, you know, within an hour of getting there, yeah. our landlord was, like, walking through the door saying, someone messed with the thermostat, and it's in our rental agreement. And we were all actually tripping on mushrooms and <laughs> drinking beer. Not all of us. And, well, most of us. Oh, dear. And uh, playing. They had, like, a top golf game. And anyways, yeah. we were, like, all just kind of hanging out, and she pops in, and she's like, wait, you're not trimming weed. Because people rent Airbnbs, oh they bring hundreds or even thousands of pounds through Seriously. these Airbnbs, mm -hmm. they Jesus. trim them, they trash them, oh. and then they leave. So even in the modern rec, you know, sort of, you know, era, there's people who are moving to follow the harvest. I had no idea. Yeah. And, wow. and they're nomadic. Just, yeah. You know? Yeah. I was just there in March of this year and mm -hmm. it was, yeah. So we could sell all our shit and get a big van and just go from crop to crop. 
That sounds hard. Yeah, I <laughs> would not want to do that. No, and by the right. way, about five life. o'clock in the morning, I life. was awakened to a startling noise, and I woke up in the pitch black room, and I mm-hmm. saw a bearded Lorax <gasps> rummaging through my closet. Oh my god! And I was like, "What are you doing in here?" And he went into the next closet. I'm like, "Wes," and he walked down. And I was like, "What the fuck?" And I went back to sleep. Yeah. Turned out, Wes was fucking sleepwalking oh, on mushrooms. Oh no shit! Yes. Oh Wes. Oh, you're just a party waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should come next time. It gets cray cray. Oh, dear. Yeah. But uh, the oh, lady, the landlord long. was so happy we weren't trimming Tr- in right. her living room. Yeah. She was actually kind of shocked because we weren't even wow. smoking weed in the house. We were just, it just high but we on were high on mushrooms. <laughs> like, hey, hi. She's uh, got to expect something. Just, yeah. a little, just something to be yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. I've had friends that you know went to the Green Rush uh, for a couple, three months or whatever. I mean, it, you know. Back in the 90s, I actually went to Alaska for a summer to, to work in the fishing industry. And these, uh, they're not trimmigrants there, they're college students and such. And they go up there to the canneries and they will work 16 hour days just cutting fish heads. And sometimes uh-huh. they lose fingers and hands or whatever, you know, because they get real drowsy by hour 12. Yeah. And uh, people do that as well in the trimming industry. They'll go and they'll trim for 16 hours. You're mm-hmm. making an hourly wage and oh, it just okay. becomes really kind of repetitive, mundane work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Actually, many of them camp out both at the canneries. I've seen the tent cities at the canneries of just the employees wow. and in Humboldt with no running water, no, oh, mm-mm, mm-mm. you know, you got to live out of an <laughs> ice box. Yeah. Yeah. No. If you're lucky. The tent yeah. gets a little stinky, a little oh, hippie yeah. smelling. You might have some bugs. They all wear hats. Ew. Uh, get the lice out of there. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, sure, Mary. <laughs> yeah. I wonder never, whether, you don't want to see lie. how the sausage is made. Just give me the sausage. Give me the sausage. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we're spoiled up in our trim room. Oh, my God. Yeah, they can, <laughs> they can be dirty people. But God, they know how to trim a bud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Zeb, that is an art form. I mean, this is called Mm -hmm. the art of trimming that people take very seriously. Yeah. And hippies, you know, it's like, how well is your bud trimmed, man? That's Mm -hmm. a big difference maker, right? Yeah. I've had uh, people comment on ours, our our product and the the way it's trimmed and kind of our philosophy on it against kind of the way they get other stuff. I'm not going to say any names, but like... I don't like the Mylar bag stuff. I don't like anything you can't see because you don't know it's in there, but you know it's machine trimmed and mm, you know it doesn't yeah. look the best. Um, so, like, I, that could be make or break. And for somebody who does trim, that that's it's make or break for me. I'll put something back if it wow. doesn't look good. Okay. Yeah, well, And usually the, high, oh, yeah. the higher quality the weed is, the better it's trimmed. Mm-hmm. So if you it's go, nice. if you're in a legal state and you go to a dispensary, the really cheap outdoor weed almost looks like brick weed you yeah. know you're like under a hundred dollar ounce yeah it's yeah. gonna just be stuffed in there mm-hmm. i mean and you'll sometimes see bugs and fucking things in there so you cut know. off the stem and throw it in yeah because yeah. oh. it's very a cheap agricultural product and mm-hmm. then like mid-grade weed is generally machine trimmed and a big reason you don't want machine trimmed weed is because it knocks off the trichomes yep. yeah i would think um, and it's it knocks so off machine. you know some of the it it, it it isn't good for the terpenes, I guess, yeah. is mm-hmm. the best way to explain it. So I mean, you get a product that's you know already not great and then kind of takes yeah. it down a notch. Yeah. So it's really the high-end product mm-hmm. that's a true, you know, farm-to-table, agricultural, you know, uh, mm-hmm. commodity like where they take the time yeah. the whole way through. If Because you're not going to hand-trim something well if you're just going to shove it in a turkey well, bag no, and yeah. mail it yeah. across the country. Exactly. Right. And yeah. for those of you who are new, trichomes are the little mushrooms. If you look at it under a microscope, it's where all the oil is on these little pistol sort of things Sparkly. on the bud. And that's where you get all the good stuff. So look like little uh, teardrops on it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So if those are knocked off, obviously the bud isn't going to be as effective. Now it'll still get you stone. Yep. I could, I, you know, I went to, Peru, Brazil, 10 years ago. And I, that's the last time I've had brick weed. Uh, and it still got me stoned. That's all we fucking had. Yeah. Of course, I had to smoke a couple J's, you know, to get mm-hmm. to my place or whatever. It still works. But when you're a spoiled bo- bearded Lorax uh, or a spoiled, <laughs> you know, Rickard DJ, uh, you want the high end stuff because we're, we're uh, connoisseurs. Absolutely. Connoisseur. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's also a symbol that it's a quality product. Mm-hmm. So you know yeah. that you can tell from looking at it. Yeah. And, they're, uh, 
uh, our CEO is very, very uh, happy to pay the trimmers a premium wage. And good. And we have a very, very good pay structure because he knows how important it is. He knows, you know, what we're we're putting out there is we're we're pretty much the end process. Yeah, right? I was so, going to say usually trim or packaging yeah. is the quality control. Mm -hmm. If you yep. guys don't get paid well or if you don't give a shit about your job, then exactly. you're going to eventually end up packaging you know, ground Oof. weed just, or just furry whatever. weed or yeah. Oh, hey, I found weed, this on my you shoe. Know, exactly. <laughs> Whoopsies. This was in my hair all day yesterday. Yeah. Even oh. the back, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> gross. <laughs> well, and, you know, some companies treat trimmers poorly. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. legal companies and, you know, they, they get what they give. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I've also heard of trimmers having to process like really molded out crops that Ew. people are just mm -hmm. trying to sell. And sometimes they're it's asked horrible. to, you know, break yeah. their ethical or moral, you mm -hmm. know, kind of line. Yeah. And uh, the rec game is very cutthroat because everyone mm -hmm. has debt and investors sure. and yeah. they don't really care because they don't meet the end user. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in the medical days and especially in the black market days. You had to deal with the person you sold right. your weed to. Right. So mm -hmm. if you fucked them, you, they yeah. worst case scenario you're going to get fucked back. Yeah, they wanted their money back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but be, you know, best case scenario you, you don't have a repeat customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not good for business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but in the rec world, you know, people push through product that is not, you know, what you would want to give to a friend. Right. And yeah. and there are companies, and those companies don't care about the plants, so they're not going to care about the process. They're not going to care about the people doing it, because at the end, they just want money yeah. for a product. And the companies that do really care generally are the ones that, you know, hand trim is a good way to look and see, okay, is this going to be a good company? Mm -hmm. And and not all the crop gets hand trimmed, because some of it goes to processing, some of mm -hmm. it, right. you know, is just waste. But if their, you know, top shelf weed yeah. is hand trimmed, it's cared for. Then those trimmers are probably paid really, you know, well, mm -hmm. because Which is it is the want. end, yeah. you know, the, the oh, last yeah. step. This is mm -hmm. good info, you guys. I'm glad to help inform. Yay. Good. All right, Seth, now it's time for you to play Down and Out in Beverly Hills. From dumpster diving <laughs> to living large and thriving. Get out of here, you bum. Guess the celebrity <laughs> who was formerly homeless. This oh, is Down oh. and Out in Beverly right. Hills. Yeah, just another game to play, bro, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, right. well, listen, we're a cannabis podcast. Shit's got to be stony. <laughs> yeah. New games yeah, all the time. Stony. Yeah. And at the end of the show, you get stony baloney. Uh, this is yeah. a podcast for people who love cannabis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, is that what this yet. is? Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Uh, is that right what that leaf is? On show number 192, man. Can you believe it? That's a lot. You guys are coming up on 200. Congrats. We're going to, by the way, have Grandma Cat Jeter on show number oh, 200. Yes. And she was our very first guest on oh, Leaf Live show whoa. number one. And her son, Kevin Heidrich, Heidrich uh, who has been on the show three times. Wow. Okay. So it's going to be a special show 200, guys. Yes. Monumental. Let's go. All right. Down and out in Beverly Hills. Can you name the celebrity who was once homeless? Number one. At age 15, this rapper was bouncing around from homeless shelter to homeless shelter with his mom and sister, supporting himself by selling drugs. He should be doing okay now, as he's just had a baby with a billionaire pop star. Oh, what? Oh, wow. Ooh, what? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rihanna's the pop star. Hello. Oh, ASAP Rocky. That's my yeah, guy. That right. threw me off. Rocky. Yeah. That took me a second. LSD, dog. Love yeah. that song. Yeah. ASAP, he's the guy, bro. Everything's purple. Look at you. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. There we go. All right, number two. There weren't two. I'm wearing purple, by the way. And so oh, are you. yeah. Hey. You got a purple hey. Mariners hat. A Seattle Mariners. They don't make, they don't wear purple. How, where'd that come from? Uh, Huskies crossover. Oh, there gotcha. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. University of Washington Huskies. Got it. Mm -hmm. Both Seattle entities. Number two. There weren't too many doors open for this 1960s musician who dropped out of UCLA film school and ended up sleeping any place he could find, including underneath the Venice Beach Pier. Eventually, he encouraged millions of adoring fans to light his fire. Jim Morrison. My guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I was I was thinking that's what it was going to be when I heard Doors. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. 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 I'll do Jim. How about yeah. an ASAP Rocky, Jim Morrison mashup, brother? Oh, I feel God. like that's his vibe. I feel like ASAP would do that. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice Some work, Chad. Want to come back for the next show? By the way? Let's go. Oh, yeah, anytime. Give yeah. me back anytime. <laughs> All right. Professional <laughs> wrestling mm. and cannabis V2. Yeah. Part Number two. three. Here we go. 
While trying to make it as a young singer in Los Angeles, this future superstar was forced to live in her car after she lost her apartment in a fire. Soon after, she headed home to Texas where friends encouraged her to audition for the first season of American Idol in 2002. Oh, is that Kelly Clarkson? It was! Oh, wow. Dude, hold on. You're smart. You went six for six, bro. Dude, Woo! whoa. It's a first. That might be the first time ever. Smart. <laughs> I feel I feel uh, less stoned and more smart now. There you yes. go. My yeah. gentleman. Uh, I heard there was a bearded Lorax who once tried out for American Idol, but never did an audition before returning to his cave amongst the evergreens and mountain peaks of the American Pacific Northwest once he learned the show was called American Idol and not American Ladle. <laughs> It's oh, just a rumor. Yeah, just a rumor, that's Mary. Terrible. Okay. You're yeah. so well, weird. I was thinking as the Lorax, he was gonna go because he thought like an American car is idling, and he's just like, no, oh, don't, don't ruin the trees. Oh, right, that <laughs> down for the next okay. Hey Zeb, where can we find you on social media, my brother? Twitter and Instagram at Zebediah Saint. Uh, I'm a dude in there with the uh, bi flag color picture, doing a little Z hand sign looking. Thing, thing looking all good mm. <laughs> yes yes you'll see some good wrestling on there and some okay. weed here and there yeah reinventing the gang symbol the hand symbol I right? like yeah. it yeah well, well, thank okay, you so much for coming back for thank the you guys podcast. I'll be here anytime you right guys on, are dope yeah. hey Wes next week extreme sports and cannabis have you ever wanted to skydive on acid <laughs> no. no we'll talk about it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Download this and all Leaf Life episodes at leafmagazines.com. You can listen to all Leaf Life podcast shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and check us out on YouTube at Leaf Life Podcast V2. Now here comes another episode of Stony Baloney, which is also available at leafmagazines.com. And please be kind to animals and trimmers. Your hosts for Leaf Life are Mike Bricker and Wes Abney. Leaf Life is produced by Mike Daly. Some of the music heard is provided by purple-planet.com. Every bit of cannabis you use is female, so please respect the ladies. Leaf Life is brought to you by Leaf Nation, featuring Alaska Leaf, Oregon Leaf, Northwest Leaf, Northeast Leaf, Maryland Leaf, and California Leaf. On the shelf now in your local retailer. Please stay tuned now for this week's edition of Stony Baloney by Mike Ricker. by Mike Ricker. Two to tango. We've all heard that it takes two to tango. But have you ever known anyone who's tried tangoing? No, you haven't. Is tangoing even a word? Everyone has tried to limbo. But even though these two world-renowned dances sound like they could be kissing cousins, their originations came from opposite sides of the world and have very little in common. In fact, tangoing appears to be a hell of a lot more difficult. Not that I've ever attempted it, nor has anyone you and I know. To limbo, it's all about being a little tipsy at a luau. But if you tango tipsy, you're probably going to end up with a concussion and a busted knee. Not that it can't happen while limboing, it's just less probable. By the way, limboing is a word. Now, if you watch highlights of the Summer Olympic Games, you might catch the tango competition. Otherwise, there's hardly anywhere to see people tango. Not even in the movies, really. There was even a movie called Last Tango in Paris with Marlon Brando, but I don't recall any tangoing. And on Nat Geo, you might catch a male bird attempting to tango to attract a mate, but for humans, that overzealous act would come off as sex repellent. Because I witnessed a hippie dude rocking a tutu while smoking a joint in the city park, he was gyrating like one of those fan-blown air dancers you see out in front of a used car lot. No one would come close to him. At times, it might have resembled a tango, but he didn't have a partner. And according to the idiom, it's not a tango unless there's two people. Does that mean he was in limbo? I feel like the whole world is in limbo.
which is why I smoke two joints in the morning. I call it the Tangy Tango. Stony Baloney! Including Rick or Wes's sick lids provided by Grassroots California. Check out the dopeness at grassrootscalifornia.com. These products have intoxicating effects and may be habit forming. Marijuana can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence of this drug. There may be health risks associated with consumption of this product for use by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children.